We're here live at the Young Innovators Fair. I'm here with Larry. Larry, how are you doing today? Good. Pleasure to see you, Jeffrey. 5,000 people have walked in here learning how to be innovative. We've got 3D printers, we've got Minecraft, we've got Lego, we have Star Wars. What do you think about this place? I've had astounding conversations with parents and with educators who, who really, you know, were surprised to learn that, oh, you can use games to learn? And, and uh, that's, that's what we're here uh, for, to make sure that they get that level of awareness that game-based learning really is effective. You know, we're here at the Games for Ed booth, which you are the co-founder of. And tell us a little bit about Games for Ed. We're a group of volunteers who believe in game-based learning as a 21st century method of reaching our students. 97% of students game. And that figure has held for the last 10 years. The latest research shows that Students are learning skills in the game that they don't learn with traditional education, such as uh, perseverance and grit and determination. You learn sometimes more through failure than you do through success. Why is Minecraft right now, in your opinion, uh, the, one of the biggest things that are out there for educational gaming? Well, Minecraft is a sandbox game, which means they can basically do anything they want in there. It's an, an extremely creative environment. I know one student, uh, uh, a relative of mine, who has autism, and we got him into Minecraft. It has a lot of power to bring out of students who don't respond to traditional educational methods, their creativity, their passion, their ability to communicate. It brings them out of their shell. The idea that competitive can still be cooperative. Correct. That's that's huge. Yeah, the, the multiplayer game environment teaches collaboration on a huge scale. And uh, Jake Lawson was here before talking about, uh, he's in seventh grade, and he runs his own Minecraft server with uh, other students. And that's a cooperative environment where they have to learn how all of the technical uh, specifications and how to keep the server running correctly, as well as a collaborative um, environment in the game itself where they come together, they identify the problem, they identify a solution, they work together to create it, and they're successful. And is it, is it okay that somebody of your stature is playing a game with seven-year-olds? Absolutely. You know why? Because they smoke me. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard uh, John Seely Brown say in an interview that he would rather hire a high-level World of Warcraft player <laughs> than a Harvard graduate because they know more 21st century skills about collaboration, about rapid data analysis, and about quick reactions than a typical Harvard graduate. That's what got me started. If we let them set their own expectations, if we let them set their own bar, we'll find that they can accomplish amazing things that we didn't even comprehend. Teachers are still afraid to bring in things to their students that they're unfamiliar with. How do we do this? How do we get it in? How do we get this mainstream? Now, if you hit our, our website, www.games4ed.org, we have a number of links that will take you to resources. You know, more companies are realizing the value of this. And the other movement that's really getting a lot of traction is the maker movement. Okay. There's this guy in Australia who has predicted that in 2016, we're going to get the amount of accumulated knowledge on the planet doubled every 35 days. Wow. That, that torrent of information is something that we can't teach our students uh, uh, about in a traditional way where you just teach them stuff and they leave and they're like a bucket full of knowledge. That knowledge is evolving all the time. They need to know how to take new knowledge, how to use it to solve a problem and fabricate a solution and then publish the, the solution. So really we need to create the lifelong learners, teach them the critical thinking skills, the media skills, and the presentation skills. I should know the parents' question is, what's the best? Yeah, Hour of Code is a great place to start. They have uh, beginning programs and uh, programming for all levels. Uh, if you want to go a little bit older, you know, try, try Gamers Advancing Meaningful Education. PBS probably has the most respected brand in America. Right. So I would definitely advise parents and, and teachers, if you want some place to start, that's a good place to start also. And, and uh, get in the game with your kids. It's fun. And, and, and let them teach you. Because when they teach you, they'll learn it in the best fashion possible. Tell us a little bit about this event here. This is the first time that you guys are putting a booth together like this for the public? Well, this is the first time we've done a public event. And, you know, we're a volunteer organization. So we just pulled this together with uh, the resources of our volunteers. And uh, I, I really need to thank our sponsors. We couldn't have done it without them, uh, especially Califone. I mean, they donated some really awesome headsets 
that we were able to raffle off and get people excited about, about gaming. And uh, my son uses them all the time. My son Alexander is here helping out today. He's 15 years old. He taught me everything I know about Minecraft. And uh, uh, we make sure he has a good set of headphones on hand so that we can actually uh, uh, operate in the house without too much pounding going on when he's playing his games. <laughs> we'll be back more from the Young Innovators Fair. This is TeacherCast at the Games for Ed booth. We'll be right back. Thanks.